Well, so far I'd say we're screwed. We're at 12.03 versus 1,000. So that's 200 horsepower difference. Something in the dyno broke. Oh buddy, I just got the trailblazer black. If you're Clay Milliken's team, it don't matter who you are. At some point in the game, you go, let's just start throwing parts at it and, figure, and see if it goes away. I would have half as long of videos if I stopped thinking on camera. How would you like that? Does it have too much camshaft for the compression? What's your comment? Alrighty, so we got everything running. We got the new camshaft in it. Who was, excuse me, who was the closest? Here is the new camshaft. I had everybody guess, or anybody that wanted to guess, what size the new camshaft was going to be, okay? It is 293 on the intake, that 50, 970, 987 lift, 310 at 50 on the exhaust, 998 lift on a 123 degree lobe separation. Now, the very first camshaft that we had in there uh, was something we were just trying to do and that was, was just flat out wrong. So it was significantly smaller. Uh, you can see right down here, I put it into what the, what the specs were. And uh, so this is a lot larger. So let's run this thing, see what it does. We're just gonna make a, it's a everything's the same, same tune up, everything's, the, the exactly same, so just a different camshaft. All right. Alrighty, first base hit. Let's take a look at the numbers. It's better. I'll overlay it with the uh, the, for the previous one, um, which would be actually pre uh, previous cam three. So, anyways, um, you can see here uh, is definitely more. Made twelve hundred and two horsepower. It's still laying over early. Uh, I want to take a look at that. It has this funny little hump right here. Um, but interesting is. How such a larger camshaft than even the third camshaft, which was larger than the first camshaft. And if we take a look, so this is the number, this is number four camshaft. This is number three camshaft, which is significantly smaller. Now, before I even bring it up, wouldn't you think you put a much larger camshaft in that it would make more horsepower up high and lose torque and horsepower on the bottom? All right, let's take a look here. So this is uh, 1083, 1111, back on 727. Look at that. This thing actually makes more torque. Well, it's, it's maybe it's, maybe it would be a little bit less down here below 4,000 RPM. Um, but it is significantly better. You're, you're, you know, 100 plus horsepower better out there. Um, but basically the same in this area right here. Which is interesting i would have figured it would have been much worse and even more better out here we're really thinking we're going to get this thing to rpm so i think there's something going on still uh, but that's like the first hit so uh but it's better everything's better torque is better horsepower is way better um which is what we figured so i think i started looking at that log and start figuring out that camshaft yeah Thank camshaft you. three so it was a 285 292 808-825. Now it is a 293-310, 987-998. I 
this is a, I mean, it's such a so much larger camshaft. That is uh, 18 degrees larger on the exhaust. That's a lot. That's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. I really surprised. I still got to figure out why this thing is not. Now we have the tune. The tune is exactly the same. So take a look at tune-up stuff and uh, see if we can figure that out. All right. So I thought maybe you'd be interested in seeing the. Let me get this off here. So here is our our current number four camshaft all right and let's go all the way back to the number one camshaft which was the one that had the wrong bank angles ground on it now that is interesting because that one did now that was a really small camshaft but it had you know one whole bank was six degrees off of the other of the other side uh all the way down here at 4,000 rpm we we're 1092 versus you know uh, 1026 uh, but then it crosses over picks up and does exactly what you think so the red line is torque on the new camshaft we're gonna figure out all this deal and then the blue line is horsepower difference between number one camshaft and number four camshaft up here at peak we're at 1203 versus 1000 so that's 200 horsepower difference and where it really started rolling over hard over here we are at like at 6400 we are 919 horsepower versus 1160 horsepower so pretty big significant difference there all right so one of the other things that we had to do on this was i really this is water jacketed headers since they're a water jacket header, there's no spot. They didn't put in an EGT probe for me. So I wanted to see individual individual cylinder temperature, see if one, you know, if a couple cylinders were doing something funny and that's why it's laying over. Um, glad I did. So what, what we had to do is we had to make these billet aluminum plates that go in between the header and the cylinder head. And then the EGT probe is right there. Um, so I got those in, good thing I did. Because as we're looking at stuff here, you can see right here, all the EGTs are nice. They're all ha happy all together right here, all in this area, all within, it looks like all within basically 50. And then all of a sudden right here, which is about 4,900 RPM, number five cylinder drops off, number eight, cylinder drops off and purple number seven cylinder drops off so five seven and eight drop off the other ones are still climbing uh so there's something going on there of why that would be um and that little bit of jaggediness there is got me thinking so making sure we don't have a noise problem or something else going on there I haven't done any individual cylinder trims or done anything like that, but usually when they're hanging in there really nice, all nice and tight together, and then they lay over, there's probably something, you know, I would normally think maybe there's something else going on. It wasn't just that that cylinder was rich or lean, because uh, typically it would be rich or lean the entire time. There it's not. Uh, so making sure, I'm going to go in, and I think I'm going to call uh, Witty up, He's the my Holly guy. He used to work for me. Now he's the main, one of the main Holly guys over there. Call Ryan up and ask him, have him take a look and see if he's got any ideas on this wiggliness and what we might be facing. Oh, I did, and also looking at the ignition power. Now this one is interesting too. I mean, it's 600 millijoules. 16 volts, 1600 millijoules, everything looks good there, but these efficiency numbers are pretty low. Like it was making significantly more horsepower than what it is. Like I would normally see these kind of efficiency numbers when something's making over 3000 horsepower on methanol, that kind of deal. Um, so in these in the 60s, so I'm gonna try to figure that out. We're gonna try to see if we can, see if we can try to figure something out but i think this is the, the egt thing is helpful because that is definitely telling me right at the spot right up here even even previously on the old camshaft it had a problem uh, we just wrote it all off on the old camshaft as being just too small but this is peak torque 4818 
and it just goes right down at 4900 rpm it starts going down then kind of levels off and makes this little hump right here like it's going gangbusters and gonna make more and then it just falls over um so maybe we maybe we got an ignition problem here too or some kind of tuning problem um let me see what we're gonna do so uh, I got a phone with Ryan, talking with him, and he's looking at all the, the numbers. He goes, yeah, no, that's not right. That really shouldn't be that low on the efficiency number for that kind of horsepower. It's pretty rare. So because we had everything so, all this stuff is hard anodized. It's such a mother trucker. Hard anodizing does not conduct electricity, so we have to be very careful. Thing, everything has to be grounded all properly. So we have some spots that we've had to grind the, the coating off of. Um, and now it's like, okay, you know, that efficiency is that efficiency number is basically how easy it is for the spark plug to spark. Okay, there's a little more math involved in that. A little, it's a little bit different than that, but it's basically how easy it is for the spark to spark. The higher the number, the easier it is. Okay, the lower the number, the harder it is to spark. So uh, I think what we're, uh, we're going to do is we're going to go in here. We're going to take all the spark plugs. I'm going to change spark plugs. Probably end up changing, maybe even change the spark plug wires i might own these out and just kind of see where they're at right now but they're just a normal msd wire should be no problem they're all equal so it's not like it's got one cylinder that's doing something weird in the efficiency table the the drop in egt is one thing that i'm looking at the thinking of the efficiency numbers right now trying to raise those up and see what's going on with that um and those are all the same so it doesn't have it's not picking on any individual cylinders so i don't think there's a coil problem or a problem power problem there but uh, i'm going to Take the spark plugs out, change spark plugs. I think I'm gonna just for kicks and giggles rerun a spark plug tap through it to make sure there's no hard anodizing in there or something. Maybe the spark plugs aren't grounding, but it seems like you would have one that would do it more than another. Uh, so, but anyways, I'm gonna do that. So we're gonna run that through, check all our grounds, check everything out here. Um, take a look and then I think I will then test that see if we can figure anything out first then come back in test it I mean we can move the camshaft around we can do some stuff like that. That's not a big deal um, it Still lays over more than what it really should um, It's starting to get up there in power normal power that it would be at I mean this is just a pump gas pump gas motor. I mean, it's just nothing ultimately we might end up working on the I will ultimately end up working on the tune-up a little bit more and all of, all of this is really for not. We're just trying to figure out some stuff because it gets a supercharger put on it. Right there, you know. So the supercharger gets on this thing and it, it all changes it anyway. So I'm not going to spend infinity on this thing to, to figure it out because it clearly is going to do what we want it to do uh, horsepower-wise with the blower on it. That's, that's just not going to be a problem now that we got the right camshaft in and everything's there. We just want to figure out why this thing is not RPM and the same as what I figure it should. I'll just test this one wire because we don't have a individual problem. 44 ohms. That doesn't seem like excessive. We know that since all the uh, the power usage is the same across all of them, it would have to be all the spark plug wires were the same. 44 ohms doesn't seem like it's too awful bad. Let me check on that. All right. Didn't like that. So let's see what's going on. Well, it's all right, but let's see. Oh, it's a little better out there. All right, so we did the second pull here, and our uh, ignition efficiencies are still the same. So tapped it, re, re, re new spark plugs, tapped the holes, re-verified all our grounds. Everything is correct. A single aught wire going from the engine bare spot on the engine to directly to the battery. So all that stuff is correct. This is all our uh, engine efficiency numbers right through here. Uh, those are all fine. Some ones are just minimally different, but it, that's nothing. Um, then it actually still kind of ended up changing. 
So now, if if I smooth the uh, Ryan tells me from Holly that don't disregard these. It's a, it's a little bit of noise, but it or it's actually sampling rate errors. It's like okay, so he said, don't worry about it. So just totally disregard. So I'm just gonna smooth those out so he can look at them better, and. It still gives us the trend of what's going on. And that one, yeah, that one there is definitely was hanging in there and then goes right away. All right, you can see here, these four cylinders up here are happy. They just started the same. Uh, tight, nice. These four cylinders, this number five now even drops off sooner. Number three drops off. And this one, which is number seven drops off and gets cold and then number six so everything in the that is uh five six seven eight yeah five six seven eight our richard now that is all in the back of the back of the engine and it's na so it's not like it's getting boost champ shoved back there uh it's got enough plenty of volume with hat or with that I'm gonna think about that while i'm running this but I'm going to lean up these cylinders a little, or lean lean up these cylinders that are running cold and add some fuel just a tick to these so it just kind of bring them down, trying to get them back together. So my number seven here is the last one I need to go adjust. Oops. In my individual cylinder trim. Seven. Yeah, and it was pretty much... Now that is going to progressively take fuel out and at, at in that peak torque area it's going to be all the same amount of fuel out. Just trying to flatten it out some. So let's make sure that sends and you'll see here so my number one is actually adding a little bit of fuel. Two is adding fuel. Three is uh, it's tracking fuel. Oh, I'm sorry so three was still uh, rich so it isn't totally the back of the engine that makes more sense um, and then four doesn't need anything I think I'm actually gonna add just a little bit to that so it's added and five obviously is remove fuel Six is add some fuel. I'm sorry, so it's three and uh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't six. God darn it. All right. I'm, I'm trying to go back over this and just show you, and then I'm misspeaking what's going on. But it's correct. Uh, okay, so send that. All right, and that all looks, that all looks good. Um, so I'm going to give up on the efficiency for right now because we're getting to that point where I'm just wasting a bunch of time here because when you put the supercharger on it, it changes everything. And I'm going to start thinking that maybe it is, here's, here's a possibility thinking, maybe it is laying over because this is a very large motor with a very large camshaft with very low compression. So I'm wondering if... I can't get it to RPM because it's so inefficient because of a lack of compression ratio. Maybe. Or probably a combination of something else. So anyways, let's run it. is significantly lower. That is significantly lower horsepower. So let me go see what the heck is going on there. Yeah, that's just down everywhere. All right, so 
Let's go look at the data log information. <laughs> and it's idling different than what it just was too. I don't understand that. Dang, now my... Okay. Now I have taken fuel out of number five, even more, and it has gotten even worse. Our, this is our spread. Let me get engine RPM out of there. This is ridiculous. That is the spread of EGTs. So it has gotten worse instead of better. How in the heck did download the right one, didn't it? Yeah. Holy cow. I don't know. Just let me check. Make sure I'm not Kyle in this thing up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what I'm tentatively thinking here right now is that given I took fuel away from it and I took some correction fuel away from it, it did run leaner. It made less horsepower. No problem. But my EGT, it went even cooler. So... This is a common problem on methanol. You usually don't have this on gas, so I'm just theorizing here. We'll see if it's right or not. Uh, I wonder if it doesn't have enough fuel to make heat in that cylinder. So, because I took fuel out of it, and it leaned out all the rest of the cylinders and that one, so therein that cylinder is probably now, uh, well, I know it's a minimum 15% leaner than what it was the pull before. It's actually 50 degrees cooler. So I'm gonna throw some more fuel back at it. Just that one cylinder and see if we can affect this one number five cylinder. So that's the the, uh, mm -hmm. the yellow one right there, yeah. Let's see there. Mm -hmm. That one. And see, then it, the EGT immediately goes up when I let out of the throttle. Look at that. Let out this green line, this throttle, boom, let out of the throttle. Throttle comes down all the way here. EGT goes up immediately. In fact, it does on all those cylinders. Oh, I, I had some guys that commented when I'm thinking that they stop showing your thinking on camera. <laughs> it I would have half as long of videos if I stopped thinking on camera. How would you like that? Well, either it goes up because it shuts fuel. So, it's either that or that or the injector is just flat out failing. So we're pretty close to throwing a couple injectors in here. I'm going to run it this time and see what it does. Uh, now that I'm just adding fuel to it, so it's either going to make it worse or make it better. If it makes it worse, then we'll know that it's on the wrong side of the injector and something wrong with the injector. Uh, so I'll change some injectors. If it makes it better, then we'll know that there's something wrong with the cylinder and it's not happy. But uh, I'll think about that too. All right, so that's where my throttle linkage came apart and broke. So actually, this, this is where the throttle linkage came off and went poosh, but it's back on track. You wanna show the old one? Okay, so the one right prior to this was that one. So the only thing I have done is I've added fuel back into it, and in particular back into that number five. I guess I can look at it right here. Get a logist if the number five has come back, even on a short pull like that, still does it. Well, let's see, so it's marginally better through here. These cylinders, that number seven and five, still just go right straight down. Yeah, 978, so. 978 at 5400 all right so i mean it looks like the the power came back around but i'm not concerned about that right this second but uh we might as well i, I might as well make the full pack full run on it just so i can have a direct direct comparison so i'm not just trying to compare part part of a pull to the next because i want to see does it go down or does it go up that egt on that cylinder because it is got i just put 15 percent more fuel back in it than what it was All right. 
right? So that sucks. Power. Oh, it was the same right to there, and then it laid over more. Huh. All right. So let's download that data log. Well, our e or at least our uh, O2 sensors are pretty consistent here. All right. It's really not adding or subtracting much fuel, so that's all right. All right, let's go look at our EZTs. That's what we're... With one more stop. All right, that looks fine. Or, same. Doesn't look fine. It looks the same. All right, so here we go. Yeah, 9... 912. I guess it is 912, 900. What is it right here at the end? 900. All right, I still have these. So it's... They've gotten back being closer here, so it's 1150, 20, so that's 64. Yeah, I mean, marginally the same. I mean, I could keep working on it and get those closer, but not concerned about that. Still concerned about these freaking cylinders. I mean, up here. That's 12, so that richened up, because we were just over 1,300, so uh, that's 1,270, 1,268, 1,297, so those three cylinders are pretty good, and then 1,195, so even that one is, you know, marginal, it's a little on the cooler side, so that one, which is 6, 4, 3, nope, 3 bad, Two, one. Those cylinders suck. Cause one is one is the ideal cylinder, I think. One, or let's see what two looks like. Two, two is ideal cylinder. That thing is that is perfect. That red line right there, that is exactly what I want to see. Is what would be normal. Uh, gal, darn it. Uh, all right, I think uh, I think I'm gonna have to think about this just for a little bit and Come back with what I figure out Okay, so what we're going to do Is how tuning on files my Jeep the SMX Jeep, but uh, Now I'm plugged back in so what we're gonna do is we are going to swap cylinders around so we're going to put we have three good cylinders so five five three seven eight five three seven eight so write this down joe five three seven eight three seven eight we're going to switch the injectors and the coils over to one two four Four, six. six. Three, seven, eight. Okay. One, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. <laughs> so three, five, seven, eight. Yeah, better, let's one, write, two, write down. So what I'm going to do is the cylinders that are running good, the way I want them, we're going to take those injectors. The spark plugs don't matter because those are all brand new. Uh, the injector and the coil from that cylinder and put it over onto a bad cylinder and see if it follows a cylinder or if it is instead of like making a pull up with this change we'll just we'll change the entire cylinder or the next one swap them and i'm hoping really hope that it follows and makes the good cylinders bad and the bad cylinders good because then i can just change parts and that should make everybody good so if not it is a big black <laughs> freaking nightmare <laughs> so big black blisters big black problem so, anyways, that's what we're gonna do. Oh, buddy. I just got the Trailblazer black back. Um, check it out. So I got it back from the wiring guy. He's had it for a long time. And uh, so I'm kind of pumped up, excited, because this thing is super cool. Let me show you just a couple things. 
if you remember, so this is the thousand horsepower at the wheel. It used to be black. We did this full blue wrap, really cool, kind of like an oriental blue wrap. It still has the, the Steve Morris engines logo kind of embossed in the background, which is really super cool. And uh, here she be in all her glory. That's this 408, so it's a four inch stroke LS3 with Brodix LS3 heads on it. One of my billet intake manifolds, uh, obviously a four inch crank, uh, H beam rod, diamond piston, all that happy good stuff. Now, what's all really cool about this thousand horsepower of the tire, because single turbo underneath the passenger seat, right underneath here. But uh, we'll show you all that stuff later because we're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff on this, but I thought I was just kind of pumped up because it's just, just super nice. So uh, my wiring guy fixed all the bezels, all of the stuff through there. So custom bezel and everything right up through here. So this all fits super cool right in the dash like that. All the bezeling all through there. Um, like I said, thousand horsepower and this thing has gone 996. Um, not gonna, yeah, probably not gonna go that fast all the time. It was really kind of a chore to get it there because this thing is butt stock. I mean, AC, power seats, pop. I mean, this is everything. Super nice. So, anyways, uh, back to what we were working on there. It's uh, this is. I'm just kind of pumped up because I just got this back. It's awesome. All right, so you got these all moved around? Yep, so per Steve's request to uh, eliminate some possible error, I don't know, but uh, five, three, seven, and eight were the bad cylinders. One, two, four, and six were the good ones. So I'll switch the coil and the injector from five to one and so on. So five to one, three to two, seven to four, and eight to six, both coil and injector. Let's really hope that this comes up with something. I hope so, yeah. So we can get it fixed and put the blower on it. Yeah, and get this thing done already. Uh, it's wearing everybody out. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have swapped, or had Joe swap, the uh, injectors, good hole to bad hole, bad hole to good hole, and coils. Let's run it, see what it does. See if it follows. Well, rough, roughly the same horsepower. That one I wasn't concerned about. What we're interested in is, did it follow or where is it at? All right, let's see what we got. See if this thing transferred over to good cylinder to bad cylinder, bad cylinder to good cylinder. Well, so far I'd say we're screwed. Ah. Look at that one. Look at that number four right there. It's pretty to see it. Can you change color? Yeah, hold on. Nope, it absolutely is still in those cylinders. And look at this one right here. That's number four. Whoops. Look at that thing drop off. Bink. Holy cow. Let me see if I can fix that. It's All right, so anyways, it takes a hard drop. Hanging in there. Boo. These ones just gradually go down. That one was right at 5,600 RPM. God oh, darn it. So there is just something. Now I'm really... Hmm. Really confuserated here see if there's something else that would be going on just clarifying so we put the number five injector over in one of the good holes and number five coil over in one of the good holes so i so for instance five to one 
So injector five, coil five, and there's one, okay. vice versa. Yeah, and one is great. Okay. So one was in five. Oh, this is sucks. Okay. That really is the only one that really matters. The rest of them, it, it's all logical. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna hunt around for and let's one last thing before I uh go into my cocoon of thinking is um let's maybe it's got a let's let's index a spark plug and turn the open side towards the chamber joe you know what i mean mark mark the figure you i'll show you how to do it we'll 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 mark the extension and the uh the extension the the spark plug tool so you mark the spark plug tool to where the strap is mm -hmm. so i want the open portion of the strap this open portion shooting that way towards the open part of the chamber yeah. okay so instead of the spark being shielded and going this way it goes to the open side of the chamber so let's go to the open side of the chamber so we mark the tool put the spark plug in right there so we turn it and go yep and if it doesn't go then we just get another plug and keep going until it turns to the correct indexing okay yeah all right well we're gonna try that because uh that did not fix it if this doesn't fix it then I got a, it's a symmetrical port. The cranking compressions are all identical. I mean, it's 150 cross port. They're really good. So I don't think there's anything, you know, going on weird there. Symmetrical port, so it's not a good port, bad port. Symmetrical intake, so it's not a bad port, good port. And it's not one bank and it's not just the four back. Uh, unless there is a, uh, then the secondary thing just could be this wiring problem. Can't be a fuel problem. That's eliminated. So it'd have to be some form of ignition problem if there was something there. So that then it would be a wiring or some kind of control issue. So at this point, what's ticking me off is I can fix all the tune up stuff. Like power's fine. You know, power is going to come around. Everything's going to be fine. Except, uh, there's no point. And freaking putting a blower on it and finishing this job until I can figure out uh, what this particular issue is because it's just the, it's just logical that it's going to accent with the blower on it. I think so. Um, we're going to try this spark plug deal, and then I think we'll track down and hunt, and I'll talk with the, my Holly guy again about uh, power to the coils kind of thing, individual coils. Even though it doesn't show up on the efficiency or spark period. I don't know. Uh, sweet. <laughs> okay, so Joe just asked me a good question now that he goes, since it's a Hemi, so which part is the open chamber? It is a Chevy Hemi. It is not really a Hemi, so the spark plug is not dead in the cylinder of the combustion chamber. It is offset. So, it is, yeah, it's on the exhaust, I think it's on the exhaust port, yeah, it's on the exhaust port side, so going, so the intake valve pocket is is the farthest away from it. Okay. So we need to point it at the intake port, basically. Okay? Excellent. Yes, there you go. It's not dead in the center, it's way over here. So, it literally, I'd have to measure it, but... Uh, from memory's sake and whatnot, I think it's probably about freaking because it's a five inch, five inch, one hundred bore. I think, and it is quite literally an inch up. I think it's quite literally four inches away from the cylinder bore over here. So that'd be the only thing. But you know, we changed changed spark plugs and it did the same thing. So I can't believe the spark plugs went in the same spot. But all right, well, let's just figure it out. Okay, so now we've indexed all the spark plugs to the open side of the chamber. That is so at the open part of the spark plug. So like, here you go. That's just, pretend that's your strap. Okay. Is this open portion is to the widest part, the farthest away portion of the combustion chamber. 
And we swap spark plug wires around too. I don't think it's spark plug wires, but we'll see. Okay, that last little thing was something in the dyno broke. Mm -hmm. It's not clear out there. I think it came separated out of the hub or something. So we'll uh, go check that thing out. Sounds like the yeah. coupler or the shaft came out of the coupler. It's smoking back there, though. You see that? Move that shaft and let the smoke is coming. I heard it was totally unload. I saw it spark. All right, so you saw right there, uh, actually made good horsepower, and looked like it was almost on its way to doing something, which is interesting, because I would be perfectly happy if it went like that. I'd be fine. That'd be fine. But um, uh, you saw something. It went right up on the rev limiter here. This little line right here is the rev limiter. Beep, 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 beep. So something unloaded in the dyno right there at... 6,500 RPM right when I was getting ready to, or right when I was pulling, getting ready to pull back on the throttle anyways. Um, actually, I was in the throttle right there. It's something unloaded. It hit the rev limiter. Seen it do it. So, I gotta see what's going on with the dyno. Um, ho hopefully it's not a big deal. Um, but, if we go look at our EGT's these are all hanging in there. They're getting farther apart now. It's just getting crazy. So I think I think it's got to just be something is going on. I mean, we had you know within a 50 spread down here in this lower RPM, and now all of it, you know down right here there would be like 50 50 RPM spread. It's 3,500 RPM, and uh, now all of a sudden it's just going south number three is really going south like really bad now here on the rev limiter EGT's drop really hard on those cylinders actually go up there on those two cylinders holy cow uh, but five still sucks three is really bad four is really bad so now it's picking on it picked on three four Five, six, seven are fine. Eight, yeah, six, seven. The seven has been well. Seven, sorry. Seven is this purple line, so it sucks. So there's something going on. Um, so I'm gonna have to fix that and continue to figure out, fix the dyno, or see what's going on with that, and then I'll figure out. Um, keep on trucking away here i think we're just going to change total ignition systems on it and go to a, a smart coil setup and just to see what's going on there instead of the six msd 600 um at a temporary loss so uh i think this is it for this particular moment until we come back and figure out the other ignition system so i guess we'll keep on going and we'll see if we make this just one video or two. But this is one video. I'm Steve Morris. Have a better day than me. Uh, if this is uh, continuing on, then I'm Steve Morris. Still suffering it out. <laughs> All righty. Well, we're back here with the big black Hemi. And uh, so what we had left you off with was that it had... Just gonna change the ignition system. We changed the ignition system. So we just put a regular smart coil back on here. Now we're gonna be wanting to put the, we're gonna test it with us first, okay? You saw those cylinders dropping off. Didn't matter what I did, no matter what, it just kept on dropping off every single time. Um, and then it would come back at the end. So under power, went down, came back, and then went back down. Starting out right, you know, that whole deal. Then you also saw that the dyno gave uh, gave it up, uh, just minor breakage. So what happened is, 
This is the speed sensor for the engine dyno. So this speed sensor controls the, uh, the load control of the dyno. Uh, this speed sensor up here controls the data log portion of it. Now this is until we get everything swapped because ultimately I think I'm, I'm going to be swapping this dyno over to your dyno just like I did that one over there. The complete brake, control, everything. But currently this is Stutzko with a D-pack and it requires this little stepper motor. So this little shaft inside uh, came loose. It just slipped on the slip collar that uh, is the direct pickup it, it is a actual drive shaft that's in there and the little drive shaft came loose and when that came loose it just goes boom it thought the engine was at zero so it just went boom and closed the valve and dumped all the water and that's why it jumped up on the rev limiter real quick now thankfully that didn't happen at like when i'm loading into it at 3000 rpm and then all of a sudden it goes and drops down or nothing it wouldn't be as big a deal because it's still spinning the absorber and there's still a little bit at least inertia weight there so it's not like if it breaks all the flywheel bolts off it or does something stupid but it's still uh I'm glad it didn't do it down there i'd much rather have it do it up there so we've swapped the ignition coils over uh we have done everything from uh grounds and all sorts of crap trying to figure what's going on with those random cylinders we're kind of we're at that point there is always a magic point where it doesn't matter if you're uh elite motorsports if you're if you're clay milliken's team it don't matter who you are at some point in the game you go let's just start throwing parts at it and, figure, and see if it goes away that is the point where i'm at it's like all right now we're just going to start throwing some parts at it and, and start figuring out at least what part it is that's bad so we've uh, eliminated the MSD 600 wiring harness coils everything go right back to a smart coil see if that all works and if it doesn't drop the cylinders then we know okay there's something wrong with this if it still does it then we're gonna be replacing the holly box it is an ongoing process all the time so let's go out there and see what we got So, I'm not concerned about the overall horsepower right now because we haven't retuned for these coils. Interesting note, the MSD 600 coil, the CDI box coil, is a much hotter spark and is a different type of spark also. So, here's a nice little tech hit tip for you. So, a, uh, a, uh, the MSD 600 uh, coil is like hitting a piece of steel with a big hammer. Bang! It's a big spark like that, okay? A smart coil is kind of like, eh, pushes it. So it's a longer duration spark. Great big bang versus a boom. So, and you're talking milliseconds different, but it's different in the tune-up. So it does change the tune-up. Smart coil tune-up is different than MSD 600 tune-up. If you have a, M a smart wire tune-up and you put an MSD 600, uh, tune up in it you better put some fuel at it because you're gonna burn it up so that's it in general so the only thing I'm really concerned about here because I would have to go back into it tune it and do it um, is to uh, I just want to look at these uh, EGT sensors and see if those cylinders are still dropping or if they're if they're all nice and everybody's equal and then all of a sudden they drop off uh, that's what we're looking for now also I wanted to rev it up a little bit higher and need to turn my two-step up because it right at the end it was on the rev limiter and you could probably hear that on the video so let's take a look and see if this thing fixed if these smart coils if we have an ignition problem that was making those cylinders fall away or if we got something else going on yeah yeah so here it's hitting the rev limiter right at 66 6700 and it only collected data up to 6500 anyways but not the important part don't care about the tune-up really don't care about the horsepower right now we want to diagnose this and see where we're at 
Now, I'm not concerned about... Now you can see right here, they're all still climbing, still going up. So none of them dropped off. Very interesting. Is there a way you can pull up the old one? Just to compare? Yep, yep. Let me pull up an old one here, and I'll show you. So... For the sake of illustration here, I'm just going to bring up uh, our one definite problem child and see the difference in just so it's obviously got a problem with the coils. Or I'm sorry, with the 600. Well, it should be some, something there. Who knows? All right. So this is now. Now, keep in mind, I'm not because I had individual cylinder trims in it trying to figure out or trying to see if that was what was affecting it. So. Now I would, if we were going to keep the smart coils, which we're not, if we were going to keep the smart coils, we would then, I would go in and start balancing the cylinders out and getting them back up there. So here you can see, so that number seven cylinder, or yeah, number seven cylinder right here, where it used to go and just fall off a cliff and get all weird and freaked out. No longer doing it. In fact, it's going up here and now it's hot. <laughs> so that that cylinder needs to get fuel in it because it's too hot uh, and our yellow is number five all of a sudden the same tune-up and it is significantly warmer through here five is you know that's almost 120 degrees hotter and then it is it goes down up here but it's pretty much uh, looks pretty flat and looks pretty good we can get a different comparison here I'll close that comparison. Yeah, so it's got it's got some fuel up here. This is probably something I can just fix with individual cylinder trim. But it's still 1156, and there is times that our uh, EGT right there was 900. Yeah, so this was that's a better comparison right there. So you can see here, this is number five. Nice smooth comes out. Just needs some tune up versus hotter then went cold and then went down and number seven was hotter cold and just went down uh you know and, and then when you let off the throttle this is always my interesting part so i'm letting off the throttle here you can see that the egts go up as soon as i let off the throttle so that egt let off the throttle that's the dotted lines bing bing goes up here i let off the throttle egts go down like they should like they should so interesting something's happening there definitely so it's definitely got an issue with the box that's good to know and this is exactly what you do you just start throwing parts at it figure out what the heck is going on um so uh, i'm gonna throw i don't happen to have one here right this second i will tomorrow so tomorrow we're going to put on the uh msd 600 a new system with new coils with the heavy duty rings with the high output coil the whole whole brand new kit wiring harness and all uh to reprove it back out but uh that is really pretty interesting right there and uh so uh good to know so you might be asking yourself why do we need to run the uh smart or why do we want to put the msd 600 back on it and not just run smart coils we could run smart coils I don't have a problem running a smart coil, um, but customer Camille, Camille wants to run that MSD 600. He wants to have the data logging capabilities and the power, con more power control that we have with the 600. And it is a better system. Um, that's why it's the upgraded system. So that's why. Could we use the MSD, the smart coils? Yes. Uh, you can do a lot with smart coils. I'm always amazed with what you can do. Uh, is the MSD, is that 600 with a dumb coil, uh, more power, better? Yes. So that's why we're putting it on. Come back tomorrow. We're going to have, we're going to dink around with this some more and just move some camshaft timing around just to see what kind of things it does do and uh, see if we can pick up our uh, high RPM uh, or, you know, move that because now our, our peak horsepower number is, you know, 6200 right now, basically. I think if we if I worked with the tune up on this, I could probably get it up there at about 64, 6500. Um and then somewhere along the line here, I would like to hear your guys' comments on I think that 
this size engine with this size camshaft and in particular this compression ratio which is low you know we're only at 10, uh, 10 to 1 does it have too much camshaft for the compression which comment all right so just to wrap this thing up here's the final edition did some tune work on it got things to, to rpm out better nicer looking curve this is just a horsepower curve this is not horsepower and torque this is horsepower now and this is the horsepower with the first original wrong wrong ground wrong get wrong everything camshaft right there anyways like subscribe come back tomorrow uh or the next day because the, the next video let's put it that way is going to have the supercharger on it and we're going to be seeing what's doing there um i know that it's going to fix everything through here it's going to really make things a much better um and probably do exactly what we want it to do so come back I'm Steve Morris. Have a great day.